Hi, I'd just like to say a few words about our European ruling political class, which also apply actually largely to our UK ruling political class. It's based on an article that Peter Oborn wrote uh, about 10 days ago, and he makes the points that I've made before, but he does them rather better than I. What matters is a knowledge of human fall- fallibilities when you're actually trying to interpret what the political class are up to. The power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, as Lord Acton once said. But in fact, it's worse now, because the members of the political class consider themselves exempt from the routine constraint that's constraints that apply to their fellow citizens. Uh, They feel they are making extraordinary sacrifices and they therefore deserve exceptional compensation. And as Oborn notes, this emotion is a psychological trigger that sets off a great deal of low-level corruption. We have seen it here in our constituency, in Yeovil, where our Lib Dem MP was actually caught red-handed, fingers in the till, trying to uh, remove £40,000 of uh, your money, taxpayers' money, to support his uh, menage a deux with his, quotes, partner. As Oberon says, once into government, these guys get into a sort of parallel universe. They live in a separate world from the, from the rest of us. It is a European and Europe, it's a sort of dreamland where a barrier exists between civil society and state-funded political elites, which largely they are, they're more state-funded in Europe than they are here, but they're still state-funded. I mean, you get nonsenses coming out like last November, the Spanish Prime Minister telling a news conference that he was totally and absolutely convinced that the worst of the Euro crisis had passed. Uh, the following month, the Vice President of the Euro Commission, one Oli Rehn, said the Cassandras have been proved wrong over Greece and the Euro area more generally. Uh, Oborn celebratedly, I think, called Wren or his spokesman, that idiot, in Brussels. Well, I don't think the people of Greece would uh, agree with that at all. They are literally starving. So whilst the Eurocrats and the political elite live high on the hog in Brussels, literally people are starving to death in Greece. So I can't honestly think that these people live in the real world. You can see that in their attitude. The great Monsieur José Manuel Barroso, uh, I will not say the words that my boyhood hero Biggles would have said about Mr Barroso, but I'm sure you can bring them to mind. He's made this fantastic pronouncement. I think we can say that the existential threat against the euro has essentially been overcome. Fantastic. He doesn't give a toss about the people who are starving to death in Greece or those kids that are unemployed in Spain and Italy. As long as his sacred euro exists, everything is fine. And that is the president of the EU Commission. My goodness. Oborn goes on to say that this arises, of course, because we have a different philosophy. In fact, we have a different culture from Europe. Our culture, as Oborn says, is one of empiricism. We're practical people. We like what's wor- what works, and what works comes from the bottom. But, of course, Mr Barroso and his ilk come from the uh, continental... Uh, Napoleonic dirigist transition tradition, sorry which says that uh, you know we at the top will think of the rules and you at the bottom you'll be, you'll, you'll obey them it's crazy it's absolutely crazy the monetary experiment with the euro is a failure it's going to get worse and worse and worse, not better and better who is going to save us from these bureaucrats. Thank you.